If I want to reduce my, my opinion of what we've done is sincerity. There has been a decision to take a risk. As a group, we've taken the risk of going into this scenario to try to become a counterpoint to the culture of products, you know? To bring some sort of sense of process to objects so that the general public can reconsider where things come from and how they are generated. And I think you made a, the most beautiful metaphor yesterday where you described the, what the buffalo meant to the Native Americans and how every single component of the buffalo was never, was never went to, no component went to, went to waste. We haven't accomplished that yet, I think we're, but I certainly believe that's what we're trying to do. I think everything I can buy is practically crap and I'd rather make it myself, but I'm lazy and it's easier and cheaper to go to Ikea and I fall into that trap as well. Uh, it's just an effort. Open design is an effort, which is higher than Ikea. At home, I like everything to be orderly, yet if there's one thing that's not, I really appreciate it because it gives me the feeling, yes, there's life here, there's, you know, something's happening. Because nothing's perfect and no orderliness can be perfect either if there's not one chaotic element in it. Here at Team Y you have these two uh, different halls. You have the hangar over there, which has things that are very clean and nice and worked out and shiny, and you might call them perfect. And over here, especially uh, at the Maker Lab, things are very dirty. But uh, what you see over there sometimes doesn't make any sense at all. The things might be beautiful, but they don't make sense. There are chairs that... Uh, that the evil chairs in a way, you know? It's funny because people are going around and viewing so many things because this is this sort of design expo context and there's very few takeaways. Like, you just basically get to stand there and look at a chair or you go and watch this interesting lighting fixture. And so I feel this is a good context for us because people aren't expecting to walk up to a booth and take one of the beautiful objects away with them. This fair a couple of years ago was only about product design. It was always about the, the end result and not so much about the process. I think it's good to show people how things are made but uh, most of the designers are like, they have their own label of their, or they have their own designs and they present it. But in here people see how, how designers work and how designers can cooperate and work together. Every innovation or whatever happens, never happens in isolation, it never happens within the box. But we are used to this uh, perspective of seeing individuals in charge of certain achievements or certain developments. If you have a closer look, you see, of course, there's a lot of people involved and the ideas come from somewhere and they go somewhere. So there is a whole network of interconnection. I think what we are doing here is just we are making this visible. This process of innovation, which I think has always been there, but has been sped up by the Internet. So it's not just only experts standing on the shoulders of other experts, but it's everybody having a question, just typing it into your browser, and then you have the answer and you can build upon it. A lot of stuff is lost because people don't really document it because it's so hard and tedious to do that. But I think that's the most important part, not maybe the, the reading, but the writing, giving it back again. Somebody writes something, and once it's published or it comes out in the open, it becomes common good. I mean, it's the synergy that's created by collaborating, by sharing the work, by this open process of creating new things together. Uh, where it boils down to uh, the essence of creation and not about who did what or, you know. It's about growth going together, I think. And I'd rather do that than lock myself up, write, write this text that nobody's allowed to change.
I feel that the Maker's Lab turns the whole matter of globalization inside out and upside down in a way. We know all too well the, the problems that come with mass production of the depletion of materials, how it's so energy intensive. And here we're proposing choices to, to apply local productions, but still mishmashing a, a very intense international field of knowledge, you know, because everybody in this group and everybody who's participating in, the, in this Maker's Lab, everybody's from somewhere else. I hardly see those different national identities when I'm here, but I rather experience something like um, a spirit that is very much shared on the web. For example, uh, the red rat behind me, it's a 3D printer, home built. And you can see a whole community growing with people who are building this machine and you get in contact with people all over the world. I believe this is really something cosmopolitan. It's a very interesting new notion of folklore in a way, you know, that is uh, some, somehow universal folklore of sorts. The world is getting smaller and smaller because of the, the digital revolution, because you can share everything through internet. I think this emergence is something you, you definitely see because it's all open in the beginning, so people just come together, everybody with their abilities, and you just say, well, these are the tools, these are new, your new possibilities for today, so make something of it. For an ordinary person, a computer is, a, is so complex that he can't, like, most people don't understand what, uh, how it works, but with the bricks, uh, the, um, the basic tools, I.O., and they can be built very complex things out of it, so it's in the hands of, uh, of the people who use them. I'm always surprised if, if people come up with new stuff that wasn't really anticipated, so it's just give them the tools and see what the people can do. So I don't really have an answer if people come up to me and say, so what did you build? And I said, well, actually, I'm, I'm quite busy just telling people to build stuff and then I'm very happy and very proud to see what comes out of it, yeah. For each idea there is this spark of, you know, intention becoming motivation, becoming some sort of movement. I wouldn't deny the genius in each one of our acts of sparking this thing, but it is definitely letting the collective take that spark and make it into the metaphorical flame that will just burn this motherfucker down. In metaphor.